Hey there, everyone. It's episode 73 of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, the only place to hear the best conversations about the martial arts, like today's episode, where we dig deep into the classic martial arts film, Enter the Dragon. I'm the founder here at Whistlekick, but I'm better known as your host, Jeremy Lesniak. Whistlekick, in case you don't know, makes the world's best sparring gear and some excellent apparel and accessories for practitioners and fans of traditional martial arts. I'd like to welcome our new listeners and thank all of you that are listening again. If you're not familiar with our products, you can learn more about them at whistlekick.com. All of our past podcast episodes, show notes, and a lot more are on a whole different site, and that's whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Today's episode also has a full transcript with lots of photos, some fun videos, and a bunch of links over there on that website. If you're listening from a computer, you might want to follow along with everything we've posted. And while you're over there, go ahead and sign up for our newsletter. We offer exclusive content to subscribers, and it's the only place to find out about upcoming guests. As we did a few weeks ago with The Karate Kid, the original one, we're going to dig deep into one of the most iconic and influential martial arts films of all time, Enter the Dragon. A lot of our guests have cited Enter the Dragon as either a favorite movie or even a part of the reason they got into the martial arts in the first place. We decided it was time to dig in and find out more about this classic martial arts film. We can start with the easy stuff. Enter the Dragon was written by Michael Allen, who also went on to write Flash Gordon. The director was Robert Klaus, who directed a number of martial arts films afterwards, including Game of Death, which also starred Bruce Lee. And in our first bit of trivia, Bruce Lee was an uncredited director on both Enter the Dragon and Game of Death. Now, as to the director, according to Fred Weintraub, the producer on the film, Klaus was the only one that wanted to direct it. The rest of the cast of Enter the Dragon has some early appearances by actors who would go on to become stars, but they were nobodies back in 1973 when the movie was released. The other two major actors, of course, at least for back then major, were John Saxon and Jim Kelly. Saxon is still acting, and prior to Enter the Dragon, he appeared in a lot of television roles, including some parts in Bonanza and Kung Fu. Jim Kelly became a bit of a cult star from his appearance in Enter the Dragon, and he filmed several martial arts movies after Enter the Dragon, including Black Belt Jones, which had the same director, Robert Klaus, and Black Samurai. Of course, it was Enter the Dragon that gave Jackie Chan his start as a martial arts actor, but it was as an uncredited thug. Samuel Hung was an uncredited fighter. Pat Johnson, who has a black belt under Chuck Norris and is probably best known for his role as the referee in The Karate Kid, was an uncredited stuntman. Remember Bolo Young, the prolific actor with all the muscles who we saw in Bloodsport and Double Impact and a bunch of other movies where he looks exactly the same? His actual name is Yang Zi but he took the name of his character from Enter the Dragon, Bolo, to cash in on the success of that movie. Enter the Dragon was made for an estimated $850,000, but the movie went on to become a global sensation, grossing $21 million in North America and ultimately $90 million globally. The filming was done mostly in Hong Kong, but some in LA, and was actually shut down briefly when they found a dead body near the set. Of course, everything did get finished up. You've seen the movie, so we know it did. And when it was released in theaters on July 20th, 1973, Bruce Lee had been gone just a few short weeks. There were several other potential titles for the movie, including Blood and Steel, as well as Man's Island and the Deadly Three. Every bit of the dialogue and the sound was actually added to the movie afterwards in post-production because they didn't record any sound when it was filmed. Now, this was Bruce Lee's entrance to Hollywood, as well as the first Chinese martial arts film to be produced by a major Hollywood studio. The critics loved it. Fans loved it. Everyone really recognized both Bruce Lee's charisma and his martial arts skill. Unfortunately, it was the last film he made before he died. He did most of the choreography of the film himself, which is, in my opinion, part of what makes the movie so good. Bruce knew what he wanted to see in the movie. 
he knew what he was capable of. He had a good idea of what the other people were capable of. And as I mentioned before, from those uncredited roles, he really had a lot of influence on the movie. Now, there have been some rumors floating around about a remake of Enter the Dragon, most likely with Brett Ratner, who directed the Rush Hour movies. But before you get all excited or angry, depending on your perspective, if that remake is going ahead, it's really quiet. Because all of the rumors that I could find go way back to 2015, and they have very little to substantiate them. But still, what more could they really do? Would you even want to see someone try and remake this movie? I, I, don't, I don't think I would. But, of course, if someone did, I'd see it. At one point during the fight scene with Jackie Chan, Bruce Lee hit Jackie pretty hard, which Bruce ultimately apologized for. And if you head out over to the website, we've got this great short video of Jackie Chan talking about that scene. And it, it's fun. We've, I think we've posted it before, but it's definitely worth revisiting. But that wasn't the only time that Bruce injured someone else on set. During one of the scenes with Bob Wall, Wall missed a cue involving a, a glass bottle and cut Bruce Lee's hand pretty badly. And so later on, uh, most likely in revenge or to settle the score, Bruce didn't pull one of his jumping kicks and knocked Wall back so hard that he ran into someone else and ended up breaking both of the other man's arms. That impressive fight scene at the end, the one many refer to as the Hall of Mirrors, that scene actually required over 8,000 mirrors to set up. And the inspiration for the scene came from a restaurant in Hong Kong where the producers ate lunch. You know that snake scene? The one where the venomous snake is guarding the secret entrance to Han's drug lab? The snake was actually a, a, a real snake, a poi real poisonous snake. And it did bite Bruce Lee during shooting. But someone had the forethought to make sure it wasn't an actual venomous snake and had had the venom gland removed. Back in 2004, Enter the Dragon was classified as, this is a quote, culturally, historically, and aesthetically significant in the United States, and it was set for preservation at the National Film Registry of the Library of Congress. Speaking of significant culture, the casting agents had a hard time finding women to play the prostitutes in the film, so they hired real prostitutes. And the homeless people in the film were actual homeless people. Something to be said for authenticity, right? During filming, one of the extras challenged Bruce Lee to a fight. He promptly lost and was sent right back to work. One of the things I found interesting, the economics of filming this movie in Hong Kong were such that it was cheaper to have people building things that they could just buy rather than have power tools or buy some particular props, they would just have people make them. And a great example, those bars that they had on the prison cell that they made, those round pieces of wood were actually cut down by hand from bigger blocks of wood. They didn't go out and just buy dowels and paint them. What's your favorite part of Enter the Dragon? Does it hold a special place for you? Maybe you think it does, or maybe it doesn't deserve all the credit it receives. We've heard guests on the show talk about how it ushered in a new wave of interest in the martial arts. What was your experience with it? How old were you when you first saw it? I was 16, and all of my martial arts friends were making fun of me, so I finally went and saw it. When I look back on it now, I see the movie really differently than I did back then. Whatever it is you think about the movie, we want to hear from you. Seriously, head on over to the website whistlekickmartialartsradio.com and leave us a comment. While you're there, you can check out the show notes and see the, the great photos, the videos we posted. There's even a three-minute summary of the movie we found where the audio is a rap song written to describe the film. It all matches up perfectly to the video montage that they make. I, I can't make this stuff up. It's great. Three minutes of your life. You won't, well, you might regret it, but 
you'll want to see it anyway. Go ahead, check it out. If you want to find us on social media, we're on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, always with the username Whistlekick. And if you want to be a guest on the show, or maybe you have an idea for a show topic, like today's show, go ahead, fill out the form on the website, and don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter so you can stay up on everything we're doing. You can learn more about our products at our other website, whistlecake.com. That's all for today. Thanks for listening. But until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.